even got off the block yet, as it said where I'm from, meaning that you haven't even got into the real things. The, this would then be like, if we start to see even the things that you could succeed on here, some people say, well, you know, if I become the CEO of my own company, and they think that that's success. Now, whether they even get to that or not, they think that's success. Rather than thinking, if I'm fully in control of my reincarnation cycles, standing at the gate between one and zero, manifesting and unmanifesting, why I'm caught in the actual current of perpetual energy. See, so that, that would be more like an actual success <laughs> rather than I'm going to be CEO. I'm going to sit behind this desk. I'm going to look at this 596,000 pixels that are burning the shit out of my eyes. And I'm going to count my numbers on pay PayPal or Papple. And, and that's going to be the meaning of success. You see, so what I had as notes here today is the dangers of the pitfalls of setting even the things that now can be accomplished on the planet as like the end all finish all or the big goal to our existence and setting the bar higher because this is where the imagination comes back in because what I noticed is is that as you when you're younger as you start aging your manifest your uh, your, your not only your manifestation because your manifestation is tied into your imagination but the imagination starts to die based on the perceptions and the experiences that we're having in the reality so when they tell you well yeah you know they're going out of space but only the people that work at NASA, son, can go out of space. And to work there, you know, you're going to need to do this. <laughs> and there's nine years in this course, and maybe you make it, maybe you don't, right? So then that kills that dream of that kid flying off in that space shuttle. This is a simple example, but I'm telling you, it's been done everywhere. Because when the being first comes into the reality, it doesn't really understand the framework. So that's also why it doesn't understand boundaries. Look at children. They don't really understand what they can't do. They more of understand what they can do until they start getting... I have that too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it happens with all of us. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i raising a child myself, so I'm, I'm watching it. And that's the other thing. If The only thing that we would really need to find all this stuff out, if there wasn't so much plagiary everywhere, is just to look at the greatest thing that we could ever make in organics, not iPhone 9 as I call it, but this actual entity that is a genetic uh, hybridization of our essence and the person that we chose to unite with, still operating in this vehicle that came from nothing, that's the brain bender, and now has arrived in full tact and full sentience. It's like even sitting next to baby and you just poke the baby, you be like, man, the baby is actually here. Here's, this is the most amazing thing because nobody even knows where it comes from versus if we wanted to track iPhone down, we can track it all the way back to the cave in which the silicone is pulled from. You see, so we know the origins of this. So I'm just saying this is the scope then of what really has the most value. And so this is also, people should see now that this is also how we're looked at. We're not looked at as iPhone 9. We're looked at as a fully integrated, self-evolving OS that has the full potential of actually connecting with what would be a countless amount of frequencies and then able to emulate or mirror, because we're symbiotic, those frequencies and then gain them as our abilities. So this means that we actually have the ability, just like if I sit down and I really work with someone who knows how to play piano really well, and I just put my time into it, pretty soon I can start hitting off some keys. So we have this ability to, when we're around something that we want to be, we can change ourselves into it. But then it doesn't just become us as just being that. It becomes us as who we were plus being that. And if you could see the worth in something like that, that's why they always say, well, you need to see the worth in yourself first before you ever see the worth in anything else. But if you look at that alone and you see the worth in that, then you can realize where the battle's coming in. Yeah. Because, of course, that's like a gym then. I was watching this movie the other day. Uh, it was called Winter's Tale. It's one that kind of slipped right out of the carpet. And it, once again, 
explaining everything there. They got the crystals, they got the lights, Lucifer's even making a guest appearance. Quite a few things are going on in the movie, but the movie is also showing you how this world in itself has gotten itself into quite a jam because of there's first of all there was only two sides anyway it was either you became a rebel <laughs> or you served the things that connected all the way back to orion which is basically the tetragrammaton it's the jehovian uh actually forget all of those those are new words it's marduk and it's inky these are the old terms this is the father and the son Okay, and then these two also in, I don't know if you can call it friendly, competition of like the conquistadorian kind of competition that you see that still exists in many of the Latin countries. But the continuous back and forth of, I'm, am I the winner right now? Is, is the Old Testament winning right now? Or is the New Testament winning right now? <laughs> is it the son that's winning or is the father winning? Because it's definitely not going to be the people. Because when you spend all of your time paying attention to something that is not really paying attention to you or not giving you really the reciprocation that you need, who would benefit from that kind of relationship? And this is what we just have to fess up to it at a certain point. If you were in a relationship with someone who never talked to you, <laughs> how far would it really go? And if you kept staying with them, what kind of insanity would you go into and wanting to hear from that individual, like what extent would you go to? And so now we're in a world that even when a person, that's why people are really turning away from spirituality now. This is now becoming the machine age. And people have wrote about this age because across the timeline you see beings that got caught through this age and they became something similar to cyborgs. This is when everything just becomes a zero and a one. Everything just becomes, well, what is on Facebook? Let me post my picture. Let me post my picture. Here's a new picture of me. Hell, look me. Me, 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 me. But never giving something. I'm not saying there's a problem with putting your picture there, but give me something. Like, spend, first of all, first part of the day, and this would be very, it, it, this would be very constructive for us as a human species. If we would first realize that when we do something that someone else has done, there's nothing really new that's there. So let us focus on doing something new. And this is what I always do. I go personally into archives of knowledge to find something that we don't know. And if I share something on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, that's what it is. Because then, but it doesn't go viral. <laughs> it doesn't go viral. It's like, you know, first of all, if it's longer than two paragraphs, it doesn't even really get a like. <laughs> because well, that's only because who has time like that's the thing that you know it's it's from the other side like of course we if we will want to assist humanity and getting this message across we really need to also see what's happening even when I drop a two-hour three-hour recording what are the odds that a person being able to listen to that recording is going to be able to listen to that recording from start to end that actually has a job <laughs> so then yeah. That first, that immediately means in that if they are able to listen to it, they probably also can't really contribute from a financial level. And then that becomes, of course, the pitfall for many of the people who are bringing messages and that they've dedicated their entire life to find the truth for us. And then they still can't pay rent. They can't do all these other things because the people that are actually listening to them that have the time to listen to those two, three hour recordings also don't, are not employed. You see what I mean? So this whole conundrum, and I started looking at the whole thing because when you start seeing it, that's where the intelligent design, if you want to call it that, comes in at because every single thing has its Achilles heel or its pitfall that kind of throws off something else. And then where that's left us is actually thinking that there's something new going on all the time. Like realistically, I feel in the world, just because I'm also I'm in the central part of the world, I'm in Central America. When you look at the entire world, nothing new is really happening here. Like there's no grand manifestation of something that's going to change things for all of us. And when it is, we don't get to know about it. And this is factual. So, and then this is where the disarming comes in. If I sit down and I even say something like that as a spiritual teacher, they say, oh, what do you mean, brother? There's tons of things that look what you benefit off of. You should be grateful. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not talking about me. I'm straight. If I leave out of this thing right now, I know where to go and I know what to do. I'm talking about the billions of people that I've come also 
to assist with the knowledge and the information. What's going to happen to them? Are we developing any massive levels of technology that's going to end up pushing us all into our next age? Shoot, they're yet to admit <laughs> the president is still sitting there not saying, okay, you guys have shock. You need to go research those. <laughs> if there's no authority that's saying that, hey, you have an org field the dream thing. Let us explain to you the dream thing and what's going on. This, see, in this this uh, this arena that we're in, there is no subject of spirituality that's introduced into the common uh, curriculum of the day. So that way, we have once we get done drinking and driving and all the other stuff that we do, when we're ready to get out of here at like let's say. 25, 26. Let's say Earth it could be a party place from 25 to 26, and I wouldn't see a problem with that. Excuse me, from from maybe a, a, a 15, 16 to 26, I wouldn't see a problem with that. But then, as any person during the gets 26, 27, 28, moves into 30s, it's now like, okay, well, what am I going to do in my life? <laughs> By 35, when you hit the mid area, it's like, okay, whatever Grandma's doing, I need to start figuring out if she really is right about this whole afterlife thing. But guess what? There's no Grandma. <laughs> There's really no one to go and start to get the details, not not the, I think this is what they said, and this is what the Zeta showed me. Not any of that, but the, the actual details, because see, on our planet, our ancestors knew those details. There was no guessing for them. There was nothing that they needed to learn. They were coming from a place that they already knew into a place that needed to know. Versus we appear in a place that we don't know anything and then won't tell us anything. So we're, we have to get it ourselves. And this is why I say, now I'm not playing anymore. Not that I was playing in the first place, but I can definitely say what I was doing previous to this could be perceived as playing compared to what I'm about to do next. And it's because of this. It's the simple fact that as I watch time pass, and I see it's been like five years now, six years, and I've been cognizant of this. I launched off with this message that was going to change everything in the book, The Code of the Matrix. All the secrets are there. There's the keepers of the keys and the writers of the light. That book was written in 30 days. And if you understand how long it takes to write a book, most authors know it's like called writer's block. You can't get something that's 231 pages and eloquently put together, besides the typos, in, two, in a month. It takes a lot longer. And it's because there was then an action of piercing the veil and that energy is still resident in that book and once that happened it opened up a pathway and I'm not saying I opened up the only pathway that would be ignorant there's multiple pathways but I'm one of those people who pierced the hole completely through not almost to when you get to a certain part in the woods you're like hey do you guys see the trail <laughs> and then you're looking back at like do you guys even know where we came in at Oh no, we're in the we're lost in the wilderness, Alice. Meaning that now we're stuck right halfway in the middle of Archangel Michael and Lucifer and not actually being able to tell who's who. <laughs> and it's because, and just to chime in on that alone, the resident frequencies, and this is what I I, I like as a term now. I kinda for some people may remind them of the the movie Resident Evil, right? But the the resident frequency is something that we have to also be aware of, which means that there is something that exists on every single spectrum of the frequency, which goes behind the decimal point. So there, this is, if you want to start looking at limitless, it's kind of frequencies. Each cymatic produces a different kind of shape, right? So as we're getting into that, what we start to see is, is that when you become the rebel, okay, when you finally say in your mind, you know what, enough is enough. I see the game. This one may be a slave. It's kind of clear. <laughs> like, if you really, really take a look at it, all it's saying is you either become free or you're in service. There's nobody that is in between. And so when you want your freedom, then you may have to look and see, well, well, wait a minute. Well, what could be actually lording over me or having dominion over me? And that's why I say I, I took years to dig through that thing to finally realize that, yes, there are resident frequencies, other hyper sentient life forms that know something, know a thing or two that we don't. And that their whole gig is just to get human beings to be in devotion to them. This is why they love devotees. 
Devotee is like if you're laying there and you need a drink, it's the person you tell to get you a drink. If you're laying there and you need to get something read to you, or you're laying there, you know what I'm saying, laying there, laying there, uh, wanting someone to dance, this is the person you get to dance. This is laying there, wanting someone to make you feel good, this is the person you get to make you feel good. You see, so these kind of entities don't seem then so strange to how even humans are operating now. Meaning that who wouldn't want someone at times to bring a little drink to them if their throat is you know dry or who wouldn't want someone to dance in front of we even go to these shows right we go to these shows we watch people dance in front of us you know we do it too is what i'm saying so what i'm also talking about is no let's watch what we're doing right and then see okay well maybe that's the entire construct of how earth works right now and if i decide that i want to go into something else i'm going to need to actually start seeing that entire thing and how it works because to, if you can't if you if you can't understand what's happening here like i don't know what's happening the world and things are falling apart and i just don't know what to do if you're in that kind of stage it's because you haven't figured something out